Welcome to another episode of Latinos Who Thrive. I am your host, Victor Escalante. This week, I bring you a very interesting conversation with Jose Monterosa with Imagina Communications and Michelle Wickmandy, who is a Google expert. We look at marketing trends for 2024. If you work in the field of sales and marketing, or if you own a company, this is a must listen. So be sure and share it with anyone that you think will benefit from it. At the same time, I want to send a very Merry Christmas wish to every one of you that are tuned in. So let's get started. And we are back, friends, with another episode uh, we have in the studio. Joining us remotely, Jose Monterrosa. Jose, welcome to our show. Very happy to be here. Very happy that we're getting close to the end of the year. Yes, today is our last show. We're going to take a vacation until next year, 2024. We'll be back. And of yeah. course, we had Michelle Wickmandy, the Google expert, who is also joining us for today's discussion on the trends of tw marketing trends of 2024. We have a very, very interesting conversation prepared for you. We've done a lot of research. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is data-based uh, commentary that you're going to hear today. We didn't just make this up, okay? Yeah. Yeah. These are industry professionals who have done their homework and they're prepared to, uh, to give us a, a run for the money here. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, uh, Jose, uh, take it away. Why is influence marketing projected to grow? Sure. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, you know, we, we, we check what the industry is saying, but it, 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 it's going to be trending next year, right? And there are a few things there on those lists that we have uh, checked, but there are four in particular that we feel, based on our experience, apply to the Houston area. Uh, and, and one of them is actually influence. Uh, this is something that has happened, at least to me, this year. Uh, the, the fact that you are trying to find those individuals that have a solid, incredible presence on social media and that can provide support for a, a specific audience, right? We're not talking about audience across the country or an audience across the globe. We are talking about an audience that is industry specific, uh, segment specific. Uh, and, and just to give you an example, uh, we recently had, uh, we initiated this uh, initiative with a local client. We were looking for influencers within a certain area of Houston that could provide us that platform to expand our message. Very complicated to find. Uh, and <clears throat> so, and I know that that is happening across. And especially for companies that may, may be out of the Houston area and are trying to set a footprint in Houston, but they are targeting a specific niche, right? They Listen, did you work. use an agency or did you try to uh, uh, use your network uh, to find that particular influencer? Both. Uh, using both, uh, looking at this from both angles. And quite frankly, it, we, we found some, but... Uh, maybe uh, not necessarily the right fit, right? Uh, so I I feel that that opportunity is out there. Did you have sticker shock? What do you, uh, Did you have sticker shock when they gave me a quote? Listen, I'll tell you why I ask. I'll tell you why I ask. I have a client that has used influencers in the past, uh -huh. and he, he threw around a number of influencers charging him anywhere between $3,000 to $10,000 for a video, okay? One for video? TikTok, yes, for one TikTok video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I guess what is what is the number? I guess the question will be what is the number of followers they have? Yeah, it's all relative. Or, they, there we yeah, get into the specifics. Yeah. For what I'm looking for, right? Yeah. Because you can be a very global guy, but yeah. you may not have any followers in the Houston area. Exactly. So that doesn't serve the purpose. So uh, no, it, it was it was it was it was a challenge. So I I think that opportunity is there uh, for those niche influencers to set up footprint and to provide value, right? Uh, for what a lot of companies and a lot of organizations are looking for. 
uh, a very good example will be Spanish speaking uh, influencers. Yes. Uh, that are in the Houston market for this specific industry. Very difficult to find. I'll tell you too, when my mouth dropped, uh, I was at a press conference at the uh, Mexico consulate. Okay. okay? It, this is all nothing but uh, media people. Uh -huh. Seated beside me was a woman that had been invited that was an influencer. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, they're sitting among journalists was this influencer who obviously has uh, a good following of Mexican citizens because she herself is from Mexico. Okay. And and again, using her influence and and her network, right? Got on the uh, uh, on uh, on the list of uh, media people for a presser, and okay. she I've seen her a couple of times, and and it turns out that she's she's one of the marketers of the client that I mentioned earlier. That uh, so I I knew who she was, mm -hmm. and we got to talking, but that told me everything. It's like we are now dealing with influencers at the same level as uh, legacy media journalists and media. Exactly. Yeah. And, and what I'm seeing is that they are becoming part of that invitation, right? Just yes. Just the example that you, you mentioned. There are the journalists, as we know them, and there are the content generators. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess you can have like two separate groups on, on a news conference, if you, if you were to think of it uh, that way. But both play a role, and I think it's time to validate the fact that these individuals have something to contribute to, uh, to the fact that you want to spread the word. But and they're not going away. They're here to stay. You two were not uh, on a previous episode that I had uh, Adele from AM Marketing from uh, Louisiana that she says that according to industry uh, reports, uh, you get a 6.1, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I, I remember the six specifically. Uh, the ROI on influence marketing is $6 for everyone you, in, everyone you invest. For $1, you're going to get a, a, a six ROI. Okay. Where are you going to get that in traditional media? Yeah, <laughs> very difficult. So, I mean, I, I, I see that as a trend. Yeah. Uh, and, and I see that as a, as a, as a way to recognize, you know, yes. uh, that, uh, now there are some risks associated with doing something like that or taking that approach. And, Don't give me started uh, <laughs> because yeah. I'll think over the whole show, but that, that's yeah. going to be the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but obviously, you know, there, there are risks that we need, uh, to consider. Uh, but, uh, the fact is that they, they are a valid uh, yes. to, to spread the word. Um, but yes, uh, that's that's what I can say about, you know, the, the influencer, the micro-influencer or yes. the very niche influencer. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of this in, in your industry, Michelle. Well, I was going to say, this might be going into our next topic, our next okay. bullet point. Let me cue it up. Talking about the user-generated content, it's the authenticity it's the authenticity that you can't get any place else. And going back to the traditional advertising, the company generated content, the old content by that organization, it's these influencers who have, well, first of all, it's authentic and they in leveraging their, their network. Right. So we, we hear it is um, first hand their experience of how they're using the brand, how they're using the product, the services, how it makes them feel, how it makes them look. Um, and, and yeah, they've got, the, they've got that influence that, in, in that authenticity that you're not going to get from the traditional media. Let me give you guys an example of uh, uh, those of you that are going to be watching either the recording or that are watching us live. Previously, early on in the year, uh, we had a guest that we reviewed his webpage and his marketing, Fonda Santa Rosa, yes. Mexico City Authentic Food. Okay. So I ended up doing some marketing and advertising for them. And I began to see in the, in the tags of the restaurant, 
this woman that is from Mexico. She loves Juan de Santa Rosa. She's always tagging him and always uh, taking pictures of, of the food that she goes there for. So when I was in the restaurant uh, this week, I saw her and I said, I've been looking for you <laughs> because uh, okay. she probably thought I was talking to her, but I, I told her I've been looking for you because I didn't have any other contact other than trying to send you a message through Messenger. And, and because we weren't friends, she didn't respond. Mm -hmm. So I told her, we want to make you a famous consumer of Fonda Santa Rosa. And in exchange, we want to give you complimentary uh, uh, meals. Her favorite meal is breakfast. So you can count on us for uh, providing complimentary uh, breakfast uh, for you. We just want you to talk about it. And, and I'm going to give you a more uh, nuanced message instead of just, you know, uh, what she was doing. All I needed to do was to write provide her the elements uh, to be more effective and we have a win-win. Okay. Yeah. Now, again, I'm thinking six to one. Okay. <laughs> if, 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 if whatever we spend on her, she's going to give us a, a, a 60% return. That's a very good return. Okay. Well, so I that's what we're talking about. It's like people are going to believe her much more than me making this beautiful, uh, AI generated content with graphics and stuff uh, because she's authentic. People know her. Uh, she's consuming and she's talking about the product. That's what we're talking about. And the other thing too to to um, piggyback on that idea is going back to your strategy. So yes. what kind of content do you need? And you were very strategic in terms of being selected. There was a yes. person who had visited the restaurant. She knew the restaurant. She was familiar with the with the owner and with the big following, the big following and relatively attractive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now okay. Uh, uh, the, the attractive could be, could not be that much of a factor if she was very charismatic and, and, and just very authentic on camera. So, yeah. Right. So, so go back to your strategy and know who you're going to select, why you're selecting that person, what value do they bring the size of their network, and then where you're going to use their content is also very important. And the type of content that you do need, I think it is also important to, you know, I think sometimes we, we shy away from asking people for testimonials or for, for their content, but I think it's time to get over that and yeah. start asking people, would you be interested in sharing your content or generating with some kind of content and, and very, be very specific in terms of what what it is you're looking for, the type of right. content, where it's going to be used. The other thing uh, would be to make sure that you ask permission and have all of your uh, forms, uh, uh, requests. Uh, very good point. You have to have a release just to be on the safe side. So okay. that is clearly spelled out uh, yeah. in the release. Uh, what is being agreed to. And, and, and I will add to that, you know, one of the things that needs to happen uh, whenever you're engaging with an influencer is to make sure that you have this kit, this brand kit uh, that is going to be used by those individuals uh, it, so they cannot get off the, the track, right? Yes. Uh, too much. Uh, you got to stay on message. <laughs> yeah, stay on message. <laughs> yeah, th this is our main message. Uh, and these are some assets, some visual assets that you can use as you post. And these are some samples of the posts that we're looking for. But we, we are looking for your authenticity. Yeah. However, you that, have some brand guidelines yeah. uh, that we will like you to adhere to. So, so that needs to happen. And you know, the thing that came to mind as I was looking at the content of today's program was this is what they do in Super Bowl ads. Is, is they use uh, consumer-generated content, you know, and they, they dress it up, and, and, and it's a big hit. I mean, we want, who doesn't want to see an authentic Super Bowl ad that is a consumer-generated uh, copy? Absolutely. Yeah. Trust, authority, exactly. and, and, and penetrating their networks. Right? Yes. Uh, th those are the factors. But, but you have on a slide here, uh, Victor, that I want to talk about uh, – about AI, right? Uh, I I know that uh, at the beginning of the year, this was probably one of the topics that we touched on. 
And we we were having conversations about chat EPT and that how that was going to change the marketing, communications, advertising, PR landscape. Uh, nice quality there. I'm an early adopter. <laughs> I know you are too, but that, <laughs> okay. in fact, AI I made me lose my writing. <laughs> My writing work, okay? Yeah. It, and and at least for me, a lot of things have changed yeah. since the time that we had that conversation. And, yes. and uh, a lot of testing, um, a lot of uh, maybe finding my way into the technology and seeing the outcomes of it. I won't say that this was the this year was probably like the official birth year yeah. uh for something like chat gpt and yeah. then what's coming in the next years is just going to explode uh it's it's gonna be a different landscape you're listening to latinos who thrive with special guests jose monterosa and michelle wickmandy we'll be right back Are you ready to unlock your full potential and embark on a journey of limitless knowledge and boundless creativity? Look no further than Wizard Academy, where dreams become reality. At Wizard Academy, they are not just a school. They're a community of visionaries, dreamers, and achievers. Whether you're a student, a working professional, or someone looking to reinvent yourself, Wizard Academy has a place for you. I know because I'm a graduate of the World Changers class of 2007 when I worked in print media. Imagine being guided by industry experts where innovation knows no bounds and where your passions are transformed into skills. Their cutting edge programs span technology, business, arts, and more. You'll discover the magic within you and you will it with confidence. At Wizard Academy, they embrace diversity and creativity, and they celebrate your unique journey. So be sure to join them in the heart of innovation, where the extraordinary becomes ordinary. Visit them at www.wizardacademy.org now to explore their lineup of courses, faculty, and the incredible success stories of this community. Your future is waiting. Unleash your inner wizard today. Are you looking to take your career to the next level? Do you want to stand out from the crowd and make a lasting impression? Then look no further. Introducing the ultimate game changer, the Escalante Public Speaking Mastery Course. In today's competitive world, effective communication is the key to success. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, the ability to speak confidently and persuasively is a game changer. I know, because I have lived through it. That's why the Public Speaking Mastery course is here to unlock your full potential. The comprehensive course is designed to transform your public speaking skills from good to extraordinary. I will be guiding you through a step-by-step -step process, helping you overcome stage fright, craft compelling messages, and deliver impactful presentations. When I took the Dale Carnegie School of Public Speaking and Human Relations, it changed my life and I will be able to help you do the same. My career in journalism and training and development was built on having the skills to be able to communicate to a team or thousands. I hold nothing back. I will give you all my trade secrets and how you can thrive and crush it. Imagine walking into a boardroom and captivating your audience with your powerful presence. Picture yourself confidently leading meetings, delivering persuasive pitches, and commanding attention in every interaction. With a public speaking mastery course, you'll be equipped with the skills to excel in any professional situation. If you're ready to take the step and supercharge your career, enroll in the public speaking mastery course today. All the information and the cost is in the show notes. Don't let fear hold you back. Unlock your potential, elevate your career, and become a master of public speaking. Go to the show notes to register today to secure your spot in the next session of Public Speaking Mastery Course. Public Speaking Mastery Course, empowering professionals, transforming careers. Act now and make a lasting impression in every opportunity that comes your way. 
You will be glad you did and you will thrive for the rest of your life. We now return you to Latinos Who Thrive with special guests Jose Monterosa and Michelle Wickmandy. I'll give you guys a preview because I just got this from uh, my friends at Wizard Academy. It is uh, uh, now uh, w- one of the, the faculty was at a big conference out in San Francisco w- among uh, a lot of investors and, and a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the industry leaders. And what they're predicting is now that is that uh, so uh, so right now we'll use this as an example of chat GBT. It has no conscience. It uh, the 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 model is built upon uh, daydreaming. It's like it'll make stuff up if you, if you don't uh, properly review it and edit it. It'll make stuff up because it's it's hallucinating what you're asking it to do. So no conscious hallucinations. Uh, so what what the the industry titans are discovering is that that that's a function associated with the right brain. And now what they're doing is they're building another model. To where, and if you ask it how it arrived at, at the conclusion, it, it can't tell you because it doesn't know. So what they're developing is a left brain uh, model that will be able to explain, extrapolate how it came up with with that. And and so we will be able to to have more of a holistic uh, understanding and concept of of how it was able to come up with the content that it created. So I, I just thought that was fascinating. It is in, indeed. And, and I don't know how many people know this, but you can actually create your own chat. Yes, you can train it. You can train it, you can train it yeah. to be you. Yes, exactly. So uh, for those that are generating, as long as you have brand guide, as long as you have some samples of previous content that has been generated and it is it is an approved language, right? You can insert that or chat GPT yeah. or your next round. No oh. cursing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so that, that, that can happen. But what about the challenge? Is it going to homogenize? Is, is it going to take out the, the spices, the nuance out of content and kill creatives? What, what's your take on that? I, I think that right now, if you are a newbie with uh, something like chat GPT, you can start creating content that looks a lot like the content that the other guy is using, yes. right? Uh, but as long as you know how the tool works and you continue to experiment, uh, just like the way that I have done, you can you can teach each the system. You know, yes. don't use these words. Use these words, right? Yes. Uh, the, this is the brand personality. Uh, this is what the brand is. This is not what the brand is. So as long as you they feed the system with the right information, you can get some very customized. So what I do is I tell it, uh, uh, pretend like you are a brand manager. Uh, and and again, the more detail you give it, the more uh, oh, it. that the content is going to be. And and people are copywriting now uh, manuals on on prompts that, that you can train uh, uh, mm. AI. So yeah, let's move on. Yes. Uh, we get into uh, the area of uh, Michelle's expertise. Michelle, how will ethical marketing affect brands? Well, I think we go back to, um, uh, we have to think about how sensitive today um, people, communi- a, a society has become around products and how products are released. So um, companies are going to have to start thinking about their ESG um, metrics or their environmental, societal, and their governance metrics. So really, it's just um, break it down to us in plain English. What does that mean? So it's basically um, how companies are meeting sustainability metrics. So okay. um, recycling, for example, um, more more consumers, and especially those. Uh, in Generation Z are much more conscientious about how products are made and the types of materials that are being used to produce those products and then also how are those products being disposed. So, for example, like plastics and 
plastic bottles and, and landfills and, and whatnot. Um, so, so that is something I think that we can see more that, that companies will be more, um, conscientious about reporting and then also, and they can also use that in their marketing, you know, uh, indirect marketing, not blatantly in your face. Remember how uh, years ago, uh, even though it was it was uh, somewhat fictitious, remember uh, BP and their car- carbon footprint? Uh, yes. Everybody thought that they were really a clean energy company when it was all a uh, branding strategy. <laughs> right. And so, right, absolutely. Companies need to be um, conscientious about how they are presenting information, how they're portraying themselves, and that it is actually truthful. Yes. So whatever they say, they need to make sure that it is supported by claims, that it is supported by their research. Today's consumer is savvy. We have they, the power. In our heads. They, absolutely. They've got the power and they, they will do their research. So if something looks too good to be true, or if it's a false claim, with the amount of information that is available online, somebody will somebody will find out if if it's false advertising. I, I, I think that we we need to remember that you know when whenever you're doing marketing uh, planning or advertising planning, there is a section in that plan that is usually known as RTVs, uh, reasons to believe, right? Mm-hmm. What are the reasons to believe on this? positioning statement on yes. this message that you are trying to set up. And that has to be backed up by data, uh, by facts. Because if you don't fulfill that section of your planning, then you're making something up. <laughs> and, 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 and you're selling smoke, right? I, yeah. Just don't go that route. And smoke make sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, you, you have to make sure that you do your homework and you're setting up the, the brand in the right direction. I mean, you mentioned the example of BP, uh, Victor. Uh, it was just a, a, a brand uh, gimmick, I guess. Uh, in- it was. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 I see marketers, uh, brand people uh, making sure that, you know, those messages are aligned the right way so we don't make that mistake of, you know, trying to be something that we are not. And, and, and the fact that there are multiple yeah. audiences yeah. watching us, uh, yeah. criticizing us on yeah. social media, yeah. we have to be very careful with that. Well, it's also influencing where investors are putting their money, what they're willing to invest in, one company over another. And with Generation Z being very uh, conscientious of uh, the very panels, old yeah. system of voting, yeah. it's also impacting how companies are able to attract talent. Yes. I uh, uh, read a, a, a news story yesterday that uh, a lot of companies are either uh, not considering Texas to move here uh, or, or some are considering relocating because the unfriendly political climate. Because again, we get into that that culture that the, the, the ethics of the brands mismatches the the state or the local region uh, for the policies that that policymakers are are affecting so very very interesting times that we live in and and of course we're going to see more of that uh, in 2024 look look at what's happened with Disney in Florida uh, as far as marketing is concerned purely from a marketing lens but but then this ties this also ties back to why user generated content is so powerful. Yes. So it's yeah, it's important for uh to, to have that owned media or company generated media. It's important to have that for a company to tell its story, but it's even more so the user generated content that's so powerful because it is authentic. It it's um it develops that trust. Because you've got the the individual who's actually using the product, the service, and and can share their experience from the viewpoint. Absolutely. And, and All right. With use with user generated content, I, I maybe something just just a plug in here. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the fact 
that if you are able to generate a very solid brand that is trending, uh, that it has a, a very uh, significant reach and engagement, other content generators will be jumping on board. Yeah. Because they will want to be associated with that, not only because they want to increase their audience, the influencers, right? Yes. Uh, they see it as an, as an opportunity to increase that, but also to make money out of it. Uh, yeah. You know, you generate content on YouTube, you get paid for. Okay, great. You know, uh, Twitter is pretty much doing the same thing. So uh, the fact that they see an income or a revenue generator opportunity by associating uh, with a specific issues of specific brands, that 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 is an entry point for many for many content to be generated by different efforts. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's get on to our final uh, topic. Why is user-generated content projected to grow, Michelle? Well, um, just uh, one more one more point though about the last topic with ESG. A really good example of um, people who left a platform when Twitter was um, renamed X and there were changes within that company. And one of them was um, eliminating some of the diversity and inclusion officers. And um, people were people were upset and they said, and that's when they left acts at, at Twitter. Yes. But that's just one example of how the how the community, how society is, how they've got a voice and they've got power to determine where they'll spend their time, what they'll support and what they'll support. So very good. Yeah. That reminds me when I worked at the Chronicle, they did away with the omnibusman. And and uh, and that generated a firestorm. <laughs> they, they they thought they could just <laughs> slip it by, but but the community and the haters came out with a vengeance. Oh, yeah. So how is how is user generated content proje projected to grow? It is projected to grow as we have all in talked about. It's the authenticity and it builds the trust and it's. Uh, that content, that that authentic content that gets shared, it's it's somebody's experience that can't be duplicated by the brand. It's it's that user's content. It's their experience with the brand, and we see this a lot with um, travel agencies or restaurants. A lot of consumer goods are. Um, we see this content produced. It's the experience that one has with the with the product or the service. So some of this content, I feel like it has become like the Uber of the YouTube and the Twitter in the sense of someone else is doing the work, yeah. generating the content, yeah, and and, and getting paid for talking head. The yeah. the, what, the yes. influencers are nothing more than you're talking in. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, I I see the guy, you know, dropping or, you know, you get on our on a car and then he takes you somewhere. That dog model. Uh, I mean, you can almost say that those are user generated uh, business model, right? Uh, you, you have a guy that has a car and then all of a sudden he becomes like a traditional taxi. Or yeah. I think uh, you, you have an individual that may have some very solid Halloween. And then he finds an opportunity to become the owner of a brand, right? And and that is the way he's probably making a living. Uh, so com completely bad it at, in, in this time, I think. Absolutely. Any final words, guys? But I, I think um, for user-generated content, if a company is, is considering this route, they need to have that packet of information, so the brand guidelines, sure. hashtags, they need to have the strategy. So they need to be like, talking to professionals, okay? So, <laughs> depends, so, so Jose, why don't you go ahead? Out, we're going to put, uh, I'm going to rebroadcast this and I'll put your contact information. But uh, tell us how people can reach you. 
Uh, they can shoot me an email, info at imaginacommunications.com or any, yeah, that's probably the best way. I mean, I'm all over social media as well, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, whatever, uh, they, they can definitely reach me that way. And, uh, look, I think that we need to continue to talk about AI. I am making a statement here that interact commitment to continue to have this conversation and maybe, uh, uh. The, the first show next year. Let's do a one chat. Let's do a yeah. one chat. Let's take let's it to the next level. Show. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do a chat GPT on review after yeah. one year, right? Absolutely. Because it's definitely changing the landscape. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Be, because I'm sure that you, I, I know I have plenty of examples to show people uh, the, the strategy uh, and the finished product uh, so that people can really, really understand and how they need to uh, uh, come up to speed. Uh, any final words, Michelle? No, I I think uh, we touched on we touched on all the main points. The your thing to keep in mind is just making sure if you're going to go that route of user generated content that you get those consent forms signed yes. and and having that uh, media packet. Yes, uh, guys, this is the last show for uh, 2023. What do you consider the most impactful uh, takeaway that uh, if the whole year flashed by, what do you guys uh, consider uh, individually the the most important topic that people really need to uh, uh, do a deep dive on that we covered, that we covered on the show? Artificial intelligence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I agree too. I agree has, uh, uh, has totally disrupted a lot of industries and will continue to disrupt a lot of industries and it's here to stay. Uh, if you have not adopted it, you need to uh, uh, get on board and uh, come up to speed because uh, uh, because you will be at a disadvantage if you don't. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and I will see you next year. Until awesome. next year, friends. All right. All right. And have a great end of the year.